Calculus Unit 3, Lesson 5, Optimization Problems. So we've learned how to find the minimum and the maximum using the first or the second derivative test. And now we want to find the minimum and maximum for a real life situation. Um, we'll find it often helps to draw a picture of what we're looking at um, in order to find the function. But in our first example, it says find two positive numbers whose sum is 110 and whose product is a maximum. First, we're going to explore it numerically just to see what happens. So the first number would be x, and then in order to add to 110, the second one would have to be 110 minus x. So if I just start picking values 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, just to give some idea, of course, this one has to be 110 minus that because they have to add to 110 which will give me these pairs of values. And then if I take their product, because I'm trying to find the biggest product that's available, we'll see that it's increasing until we get to 50, and then at 60 it's the same thing. So it means it probably came down to that point again if it's a continuous function. So the maximum should be somewhere in between there, with p is about equal to that. So now if I'm going to actually find the maximum, I have to write the product as a function, so I know that 1 is x and 1 is 110 minus x, which would give me this quadratic function when I do it. So if I were to graph and estimate, of course on my graphing calculator I know how to find the maximum. I would find that the maximum is equal to this, and that occurs at 55. But how can I do it now without actually using my graphing calculator? Well, if we use calculus, we're going to first take the first derivative of our function and find the critical values by taking the first derivative and seeing where it's zero or undefined. So if I take that first derivative, of course it's a quadratic, so it won't have any places where it's undefined. I set it equal to zero. I do find that that's 55. And then you have your choice. There are three different ways to find the maximum. Since it's on a closed interval, we only need to evaluate it at the critical number and at the endpoints 0 and 10. And if you do that, you would find that um, the maximum is at 55. Um, for the first derivative test, you could do what? You find the critical value and you see whether the derivative is positive or negative, and I won't go through that, but if you find a number here, it will be positive. If you find a number here, it will be negative. That means it's going from positive to negative. There means it has to be a maximum at that point. Or if we simply use the second derivative test, um, the second derivative of this is minus 2 everywhere, and that means it's concave down everywhere, and therefore x equals 55 is the maximum. As another example, we have a rectangular page that we're told is, has 30 inches squared of print. The margins on each side are 1 inch of that, and then we want to find the dimensions of the page, which has the least amount of paper. So we have a certain area of print, and we're going to put one inch margins around that, and we want to take the least amount of paper. So if I let x and y be the amount of print, so let's say x is the crossways and y is the up and down way for the page, then their product has to be 30 because there's 30 inches squared of print. And then I'm going to write y in terms of x, so y has to be 30 divided by x. And because this is a piece of paper and we're finding areas, x has to be somewhere between 0 and 30, and y also has to be somewhere between 0 and 30. Now the area of the page would be given by x plus 2 times y plus 2, because when we have this area, we're putting 1 inch this way and 1 inch this way. So if this is x, we would add 2 inches on the outside of that to the be the actual width of the paper. And the same is true for the y. We would add two inches, one on the top and one on the bottom, in order to the actual dimensions of the paper. Now in order to minimize or maximize, we need just one variable. So we're going to take our expression that we got here and substitute it in here to get an equation just in x, which simplifies to this. And now again, we have our choices for what to do. Typically, the second derivative test is easier, but I will again show you both tests, the first and the second. So we're, and again, these are open intervals, so I couldn't use that one here. But if I take the first derivative, I find that this function, and I want to find again what? Where that equals to zero, so in order for that to be zero, this would have to be two, x squared would then have to be 30, so x is plus or minus the square root of 30, but because x is um, a dimension for a piece of paper, only the positive one is possible. It's also undefined at zero, but zero is not in the domain. 
So now if I take the first derivative test, if I take a number less than the square root of 30, so let's say um, 3, 3 would be less than that. If you put 3 in this function, you're going to find that that's a negative number. If you put something bigger than the square root of 30, such as um, 10, 10 would be bigger than that. If you put in 10, you'll find that this is a positive number, so that means it's going from this to this. There has to be a minimum at x equals square root of 30, or easier, just continue on here and take the second derivative of this, which you find is 120 over x cubed, and then plug a square root of 30 in there. You'll find that that's a positive number, and therefore there is a minimum at that point.